you know, the National Science and Maths quiz is heating up. And Mamavi is right. Some giants fell yesterday. Uh, so did Kwabuchi. Uh, and uh, they, of course, are heading home uh, to Kotokraba. Commiserations to them. All right. Now, you know, I've been blessed. I didn't realize it at the time, but I owe a lot of who I am today, uh, you know, to the adults in my life who taught me lessons as I grew up. And there were many of these lessons, adult, uh, and adults. Of course, at the time, I didn't always realize the value of the lessons I was being taught. In fact, if I'm honest, I was a difficult child. I was stubborn, obstinate, insubordinate, and at times downright ungovernable. It wasn't because I was generally opposed to any kind of authority. No, my problem was that things had to make sense to me before I did them. So I only followed the instructions that I understood. As you know, Ghanaian society doesn't really have the time or the patience to sit a child down and explain the rationale behind every instruction. And as a result, I was constantly in trouble with my teachers, my seniors, and my parents throughout my teenage secondary school years. Of course, the more trouble I got into, the more I felt like an unfairly and unjustly penalized victim. I felt misunderstood, like the whole world was conspiring against me. Now, the only adult I could have a, a conversation with at the time was my favorite teacher, Miss Linda Ford. Now, she always took the pains to explain the world to me in a way that my hormone-soaked teenage brain could somehow recognize and understand. In addition to the time she spent listening to and advising me on my endless list of issues, Miss Ford would occasionally invite me to her home to share meals with her family. I remember one particularly angst-filled conversation I had with Miss Ford when she was preparing lunch one afternoon. She was cooking ampisi for her family and making a, a pot of tea for herself. Now, while I moaned on and on about how I hated my parents and my teachers were out to get me and nobody understood what I was going through, blah, 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 blah. I blabbed on for ages while she put three pots of water on the gas cooker. And as I chronicled my woes, she placed slices of yam in the first pot, some eggs in the second, and a tea bag in the third. Before long, all three pots came to a boil. And when everything was ready, she emptied the yam and eggs into Pyrex bowls and the tea into her favorite white mug. Just as I was coming around to blaming God and the universe for my latest batch of miseries, she cut into my rant with her favorite interjection. Kojo, shut up and listen. So I did. She pointed to the yam and the eggs and the tea and she said, I just cooked these three things. What happened to the yam when it was cooked? I had a blank look on my face. It became soft, she replied. Oh, yes. Good, she said. Now, the eggs? Oh, they became hard, I said. Exactly. Both were put in hot water, but each one came out differently. Kojo, you are not the first person to be a teenager. You are not the first boy to go to secondary school. And you are certainly not the first kid to think nobody gets him. Many have been put in your situation. It's like being put in hot water. How you come out is what matters. Ah, so I started to nod. You know what she said made sense. So, so I can either choose to let life harden me or make me soft, right? I asked her. She laughed and said, or you could choose the third option. What happened when I put the tea bag in the hot water? Again, I was blank. Kojo, it changed the very nature of the water, didn't it? That's the real choice you face in life. You can either let your circumstances change you, making you either hard or soft, or you can change your circumstances. My dear friend, in this life, we're all in hot water. It's up to you whether you come out as yam or eggs, or whether you go in like a tea bag and cause a change. My name is Kojo Yangsen and it's breakfast time. How about some tea? Good morning, Ghana. Welcome to the AM News. I am Mapita Sibidi. Now, state prosecutors say a cleaner at the residence of deceased law professor Yao Bene has confessed his involvement in the gruesome murder. Two others are said to have been named as his accomplices as the state dropped the charge of murder against three others. The law lecturer was found dead at his Ajingano mansion with his hands tied behind his back and a piece of cloth stuffed in his mouth. Court correspondent Joseph Akable was in court and now reports.
Four persons were on September 16 charged with murder by state prosecutors. They are Isaac Butcher, a cleaner at the residence of the professor, Christian Poby, another cleaner, Adams Mensa, a gardener, and James Nana Womba, also a cleaner. State prosecutors on Wednesday informed the court their investigations have cleared Isaac Butre, Christian Poby, and Adams Mensa of any wrongdoing. James Nana Womba, who served the professor as a cleaner, is said to have confessed his involvement in a murder, naming three others as his accomplices. This includes one Opambo Eja Bedu in cancer who has been arrested by the police. He was charged with murder and conspiracy to commit murder together with James Womba. Prosecutors requested a warrant for the arrest of two others whose names were not mentioned. It's not clear at this stage what the motive of the crime was. Prosecutors say investigations are still underway and efforts are being undertaken to apprehend the two others on the run. The two others who have been charged have been remanded into the custody of the police and are to reappear in court on October 14. President Akufado will soon address the nation on developments in the Volta region, which have resulted in the killing of at least three people and injuries to others, including a police commander. Some security analysts have wondered why the president has not spoken about the situation since it started last Friday. Information Minister Kojo Opong Kruma says the president is receiving briefing on the matter as the state continues with its monitoring and assessment. He spoke with head of security desk here, Joy Yu's Gifty and up here. A lot of people have also called for the president to speak. Should we expect anything from President Kufuato anytime soon? I'm sure the president will be speaking to this matter um, as soon as possible. Uh, he is briefed on the ongoing operations. Uh, we have said time and time again, I think sometimes people miss it, that it is not over yet. The first part was contained and uh, the security agencies were firmly in control, particularly of the sensitive installations within the area. We have said from Sunday that there are outstanding threats that security agencies are working to ensure they contain, they need collaboration and information to be able to uh, you know, protect against some of those outstanding threats. No wonder this dawn we saw um, what happened uh, at the STC yard, and there are more threats that we need to work together to contain. And then you have the medium to long-term program of dealing with this once and for all. That's got to do with a combination of law enforcement and education. Meanwhile, Vice President Dr. Bamiya has been giving details of a presidential directive for the deployment of additional security resources to the region. Speaking on our sister station, Asempa FM, on Wednesday, the vice president was emphatic, uh, was, says an emphatic government will not dialogue with criminals. There's been some good intelligence work taking place, uh, and, and, and we, we've seen some work. If we're going to have to even double and triple the effort, mm. uh, but we've invested a lot in the security services since we came into into office and they've done quite a bit both the police and the army mm -hmm. in terms of vehicles in terms of ammunition in terms of conditions of service uh, and so morale generally is very high we, we've invested in in a lot of intelligence uh, equipment uh, and so on and so we are we are we are we're, we're going to have to do more because it's an a live situation that we are dealing with now on a minute-by-minute minute basis and they are deploying the resources as we speak into uh, these areas so we're going to continue to do well uh, and I know that um, the directions of the president are, are quite clear uh, in terms of dealing with this and the you know military police national security they are all focused on this matter no? in Tinyamiadum uh, we in Ghana need unity this is not a partisan matter. Mm -hmm. We need unity across all regions, across all tribes, across all religions. We need to talk uh, and, and provide necessary intelligence. Flag bearer of the opposition National Democratic Congress, John Jomani Mahama, has criticized the new Patriotic Party government for deliberately abandoning education infrastructure started by his government. He says it is sheer wickedness to abandon projects and also refused to give them credit for some projects started during his tenure. The NDC flag bearer was in the Doma West constituency. <laughs> Yo, Mahama, ba, 
Free Now, a former member of parliament for Sisalao East, Moses Daniba, is the new national chairman of the People's National Congress after defeating incumbent Bernard Mona. The PNC has also elected David Apasara as presidential candidate for the 2020 December general elections. At the party's congress on Wednesday, the former Bulga Central MP beat Reverend Samuel J. Debra and Samson Asaki Awingobet to contest on the party's ticket. There's more in this report by Nicholas Echo. So, Moses Deniba is duly elected the chairman. Chairman, sorry. This announcement shattered the dreams of Bernard Mona retaining the party chairmanship. Former Sisala East NP Moses Daniba secured 1,297 votes, while Bernard Mona got 1,266 votes. Bernard Mona, reacting to his defeat, said he is grateful for the solidarity shown to him. My leadership and chairmanship of the PNC has come to an end. After the count of ballot, I was defeated by my elder brother, the Honorable Moses Daniba. The PNC certainly has won. And I want to thank all of you for the solidarity that you have shown all these years. On my part, I wish to state that I'll do all that is possible to rejuvenate the PNC. And I'm calling upon all members across the country and even abroad who have the love for PNC to come on board. Come on board, let's rebuild the party. Our party has shrunk down to a certain level that was not very acceptable to some of us. With just two months to the election, former member of parliament for Bolgatanga Central, Mr. David Apasa, emerged victorious to lead the PNC in the 2020 elections. He won the election with 1,315 votes, followed by Samuel Awengobet with 789 votes and Reverend Samuel J. Debra, who came third with 465 votes. And I want to let Guardians know that as this opportunity opens itself, I am going to work hard and let Ghanaians know that PNC is a vehicle that can carry you to the Jubilee House. We are going to hit the ground running because it is very belated. 
We are just with about three months to go. So I call on PSC members and all sympathizers, all those who had given up hope that the vehicle is awake again and we are driving straight. We hit the ground running. Former flag bearer of the PNC, Edward Mahama, consoled losing aspirants and urged them to prepare for future elections. For those who contested and lost, let me say this, you have not lost, you have won. Because today marks the day when you go and take stock of what you did for this party. And then today also marks the day when you have to start learning. When you lose, you go back and revise your notes. And then you come back and maybe you will win comfortably. In conformity with the COVID-19 preventive protocols, the People's National Convention's Congress, unlike previously, was organized across the 16 regions of the country. The UDS guest house in Accra said that the coalition center, where the results from the various regions were collated and announced by the Electoral Commission. In all, 23 rules were contested for at the National Delegates Conference of the Party, with Janet Asana Nabla elected as the General Secretary, Abbas Nuhu as the National Organizer, and Hidayah Sunjun Ibrahim as the women's organizer. Nicholas Ekoyamo's report for Joy News. That's it for the AM News. The show continues with Mama Vio Sabwaje, joined by Joseph Akable for the news review. I am a Peter CBD. Have yourselves a fantastic day. Oh, thank you for joining us. Mapito Sibidi with the AM News. Just gone by if you missed it. Well, we've got the headlines. So we've got, we covered as well. Joseph Akable is here. When he's on, uh, he's not on the show. He's our court correspondent. That's why we tend to talk about some of the things that happen in court. Today, he will tell us about the Professor Bennett issue and the alleged confessions of a cleaner. But before we even start with a review, let's talk about the weather. In some parts of the greater Accra region, it has been raining. So we'll tell you what to expect before you get out of your home, hopefully. Uh, pack the right materials. Dress appropriately if you're coming to the center of Accra today because it's been raining. That's how it looks by way of the weather courtesy, the Ghana Meteorological Agency. So if you look at Aflau, Accra, Kaswa, Cape Coast, Takade, Axim and Ho. Uh, later on this evening, it will be cloudy. They say in the afternoon, uh, the sun will come out, uh, but some rain to be expected, and that's why we're experiencing it in some parts of Accra. So a uh, similar situation across the country. Just find where you are and look at the situation for the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. But I guess across the country, largely, there will be rains, it will turn cloudy in some parts, sunny in the afternoon, but it will go back to being cloudy in the evening again with possibility of rain in a lot of the parts of the country. So as you step out, please be warned or take the, uh, the necessary tools. Definitely have an umbrella, wear the right shoes and the right clothing. And that's your weather. All right. So let's look at the newspapers now. Joseph, good morning to good morning, you. Good morning, Yeah, you're good? I'm doing well. It's good the, to see you. Yeah, definitely. You too. Uh, there's one thing before we talk about the court. The president did speak about, uh, you, you know, the, the disturbances with the so-called secessionist groups yesterday when he appeared on the radio station because the call was that he had not spoken. He had not said anything about it. You monitored uh, him as he spoke on the radio station, what exactly did he say? And so first, uh, he responds to the criticism that he's been silent on the issue. Uh, he explains that uh, it was the heat of events and he didn't want to cause a panic uh, because as a leader, it's about managing and ensuring that the men are on the ground doing the work. And he's been briefed daily and he understands that the security agencies are on top of the issue and they will deal with it. And so that's why he opted to remain calm rather than make any bold pronouncements that 
uh, may give people the wrong impression. So that was the first issue uh, he spoke about. Then the other one had to do with uh, the fact that despite uh, he saying they were dealing with it, there was an attack on Friday, another attack happened on Monday. And his explanation is that when dealing with terrorist situations, there's always the element of surprise. And he makes reference to the 9 11 happening in the US. But he says what is important is that your security agencies are up and doing, picking intelligence and following up on leads, such that subsequently, uh, if they intend to undertake any attack, it will be difficult for them uh, to carry it out. And so uh, that has been a briefing. It's been assuring that he has confidence in the various security agencies, the army, the military, and the intelligence agencies. And he's clear in his mind that this is something that they can deal with it. And the groups will find it difficult to succeed uh, subsequently. And so uh, that is the president's own uh, response on that. But the vice president yesterday on Asempai FM mm -hmm. also responded directly to the calls for engagement. And he says... Uh, who are we going to engage with? We cannot engage with criminals. And so as far as he's concerned, those people need to be dealt with in accordance with the law. All right. Okay, so that's settled with that matter. Let's also talk about a one-day exercise being organized by ele the Electoral Commission. If you have not, you qualify to register to vote in the uh, upcoming elections, but you have not registered. You missed the last registration exercise. Well, there is a one-day window, and that's exercises today. Let's share with you the release from the Electoral Commission. It says, as previously advertised, the Electoral Commission will undertake a one-day voters' registration exercise tomorrow, which is today, Thursday, the 1st of October, in all its district offices across the country. The registration exercise will afford eligible citizens who could not register and I just ended the exercise, the opportunity to do so. Eligible citizens who take advantage of this exercise will be able to vote in the December 2020 general election. So that's the release from the Electoral Commission. And that window is just today. So take advantage. After today, though, you still can register, except that you won't get the opportunity to vote, not in the 2020 election. But the NDC was in court, Joseph, on this matter yesterday, seeking to stop this process yes uh, they had co some concerns about uh, the, the requirements that the EC was supposed to meet in terms of advertising this particular exercise and then publishing within i think about 21 days 21? that they expected mm -hmm. to do uh, but the court threw out the matter saying that they should have come on notice and that they we understand the ndc says they intend to file the matter again and go back to court but obviously that would have been after the exercise has taken place and so if anything mm -hmm. they would have to be seeking the court to uh, cancel or, or set aside all the processes that would have taken place. But all those are matters that the court will decide, depending on the merits of the arguments they put forward and the responses that will come from the Electoral Commission. Well, this story is in the Daily Graphic newspaper, so let's just share the rest of it in terms of what's making the front page. Uh, benefits of Tree Crops Development Authority, $16 billion to accrue annually. Uh, also, there's a set special supplement on China National Day. Hopefully, we can wish our... Chinese friends, a happy day today before we wrap up the show. Cleaner confesses involvement in Professor Bennett's murder. We will share details of that for you. Joseph was in court. The story was in our AM news. But what else did happen? And then that one day voter registration uh, that we've been talking about and the NDC's court action, which was unsuccessful. On the back page, President inaugurates hospital at Tepa. And Hyundai Motors support Kolibu Accident Center. They presented a uh, a number of medical items with 20,000 Ghana cities to the Accident and Emergency Center of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital to support operations of the center. All right, so details of these two stories on the back page of the Daily Graphic. The Daily Dispatch now, front page. We will deal with troublemakers during elections. That's according to... The President Gabi Otredako and Richard Nyama on Western Togoland Wahala. Accra Mayor on whether to legalize or not to legalize Okada. Uh, also on uh, that story in the paper today. On the back page, well, uh, just details of what's on the front page, except for this um, setting of landslide victory in the summer polls. That's a very confident President Okofuado um, saying there. So, these are some of the stories by way of headlines from back page, the Daily Dispatch. Joseph will tell us what's in the Ghanaian Times. The front page of the Ghanaian Times says, President inaugurates 60-bed capacity Tepa Hospital. Activities of Western Togoland Group Police Soup naps uh, 22 suspects in Ho. 
and the Ghana Port and Harbour Authority says it's poised to construct the Keta Port, uh, the port that has a CEO who is working from Tema. Uh, we are told they are poised to have the port in place. Uh, government Before secures, the 2020 elections? Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Government secures 92.9 million uh, euros EU economic support grant. And EC conducts one-day registration exercise today, also on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. The back page has uh, the president inaugurating a tree crops development authority and Pone Kantamanso Assembly achieves 38% annual revenue in six months. Uh, quickly, the uh, just page three, the crime page. It has uh, this update on the activities of the Western Togoland group. We are told that the police have arrested 22 persons. I said 22 people have been arrested by the security agencies in connection with a terrorist attack on the intercity STC yard in Ho at the Volta Regional Capital in the early hours of Monday. The suspects, who included 16 men and four women, are suspected to be members of the Western Togoland group, were arrested at a hotel in Ho where they were holding a secret meeting yesterday. Uh, four armored vehicles and four military pickups were used for the operation to nab the alleged separatists. Uh, the commanding officer of the 66th Artillery Regiment, Colonel B.B. Pantoa, who confirmed the story when the Ghanaian Times contacted him, uh, said that the operation followed intelligence gathering by the police, which pointed to the presence of the suspects at the hotel. He says as soon as the CID alerted us, the joint team moved to the hotel to arrest them. He said the captives did not resist arrest, and so there was no fiscal struggle. And there was also no need to fire any uh, weapon. He said the suspects have been taken to the Volta Regional Police Headquarters soon after uh, the arrest. And so we are told that um, the police headquarters at the regional level, they want to remain, they, they don't want to speak on the issue. They said they are yet to screen them. And so they cannot disclose their identities to you immediately. And so uh, that is it in terms of the update regarding the mm -hmm. STC attack. Uh, the Ghanaian Times has the latest on this. Uh, there's some other story here. Um, has to do with the... Uh, so one relating to Professor Bennett's case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was just saving that so you would give us uh, a lot more details of that. This is, it, was this the second court appearance? Yes, this is the second court appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was when uh, four individuals were taken to the court and, and charged uh, with murder. Uh, they were three cleaners and a gardener. Now, yesterday we are told by the police that they've been conducting investigations and they realized that Two cleaners and a the gardener, there was nothing incriminating about their conduct. Okay. And so uh, they, they were let go. They were let go. They dropped the case against them. But he said one of the cleaners, in the course of investigation, has confessed his involvement in the murder of Professor Bennett. The police prosecutor also says that he's gone a step further to name three individuals he carried out the act with. The police followed up on that lead and they've been able to arrest one of the three individuals and so they came to also ask the courts for a warrant uh, for the arrest of the two others they didn't mention their names for the two others but okay uh, the court granted the arrest warrant and so they said they are on a manhunt for these two individuals uh, the one who was uh, had been picked up he said he was arrested somewhere in Ashaiman mm -hmm. and so and and, and there's the interesting thing so he was also in court he was brought to court hmm. and charged with uh, murder so they dropped the case against the three people they left one person one mm -hmm. James Womba then uh, there is this uh, gentleman Opambo Bedu in Kansan, that's his name. He's the second one who was named among the three who has also been picked up and was also brought. So he, they've, they've been both charged with uh, murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about the, the guy who was brought yesterday that I noticed was he had some injuries here, just that is behind his hand, this side. Mm. He was bleeding. Okay. Yeah, and so either he, had, he must have been in a struggle just before coming to the court because it was fresh wounds mm. on the left and the right side. It must have been in a struggle just before coming into court or... I guess he may have been arrested uh, just before they brought him to court okay. because they brought them sometime around at twelve thirty. Okay, about. so they're looking for two more people two more that people this who cleaner, ran. cleaner named as his accomplices. Okay, did they talk about motive? No, that is not clear at this stage. I mean, and and, and the same investigation is still ongoing, and they are still trying to understand what exactly happened. But the headway they've made is that uh, they now know the suspects they are looking for, and they know who to hold in terms of those who worked uh, within the the household and so uh, that is it that, that is it by way of uh, the update that came into the court yesterday so the, the, the judge uh, the magistrate remanded the two individuals into the custody of the police they are to come back uh, October 14 uh, as the police said that they are investigating the match so that's two weeks mm -hmm. away 
and the expectation is that on that date, if they've made any fresh arrest, they will let us know. Okay, but this cleaner uh, who named the three others still pleaded not guilty. Their pleas have not been taken yet. Oh, please not it's taken. Yeah. Okay, all right. So we're going back to court when? Uh, October 14. Okay. And this cleaner is important to state is different from the other one who had granted interviews. You know, there was one cleaner mm. who said he wiped the blood and everything. That's not the same cleaner. Okay. It's a different He's one. He's part of those who have who been... discharged. That's okay. Isaac Butcher. He was discharged. Mm. This one is mm. James Womba, uh, together with Opambo, Eja Bedou in cancer, mm. who are currently before... But who court. was in court? Uh, just uh, in terms of the family members of the three individuals who were discharged. In fact, on the first day... Uh, when we went last two weeks, they were very unhappy that their relatives had been brought to court. Mm. Uh, some of them were very unhappy, especially when some pressmen were taking photographs of them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they, they were uncomfortable about that. But today, uh, yesterday, when they were discharged, they were very excited. The mother of one of the accused persons uh, was actually crying after proceedings uh, because, I mean, she said, uh, this is an unfortunate thing. The man is just working mm -hmm. in the house and something happens and they have to be... Uh, pick it up as well. Yeah, so. I think that's something that we also talked about. Uh, the fact that when something happens, there must be thorough investigations before we put people through this whole process. It's yes. not enough to just pick up people yeah. and go and remand them. You have to do, I mean, due process must take place. You must duly investigate and there must be something pointing to them, not just because they work there. Yes, you know? I, I Otherwise, agree. Otherwise, it's highly unfair. And, and another issue to worth uh, raising is the issue of the confession. I mean, in past cases, I, I recall the Republic versus Eugene Bafo Boni one, where the, the, the legitimacy of a confession statement was, was questioned. Mm -hmm. And so there's a process to which you extract it. The person needs to offer it freely. They, he needs to have an independent witness present, or he needs to be aware he has a right to counsel. Has he waived it? All those are issues that... Uh, we expect the investigative body to go about it mm. appropriately. And so mm. if you pick the Eugene Bafo Bonnie case, there were some confession statements that the court rejected and there were others that the court accepted uh, simply because of the process that had been used to extract them. Mm. And so in the haste to uh, get to the bottom of this matter, because if the person gets counsel eventually, he could make the case that I didn't confess. I was Does it mean he didn't compelled. have a, a lawyer representing no, him? He didn't, the, the two of them didn't have lawyers. The ones who had lawyers were the three individuals who had been discharged. And so these two individuals were brought, they don't have lawyers. Interesting. Yes. And so so um, just take, take this story as still unfolding. Exactly. I mean, it could just simply be a, a, a one of those things that comes out. And in the end, this gentleman who supposedly confers, it may not have been a confession after all. That's just yeah. what we are saying, that this is not a conclusive matter. It's still very much ongoing, very open. Uh, so keep your minds open as well. We hope that the police in the end will nail the, the right persons, by the way. So this is what happened in court. The, I, I guess the second uh, court case because of the, uh, you know, there was the NDC, NDC one, one. Uh, and then this other one yesterday. All right, let's do the business finder. The business finder in the business and financial times, the two financial newspapers uh, today. The business finder first sold cat for 83 point five kilometer railway from Kumasi to Obuasi as part of the new Western line. Are we counting the salt cutting projects? Like this every day this where's the salt that we use in cutting the projects? So we can start cutting some of the <laughs> shovel. I want to see the salt. This one is actually a shovel. Yeah it's but they always say salt even if it's yeah. a shovel or so I, I want the the salt some. That's it's what I'm a, saying. It's a, it's a shovel salt. <laughs> Ecobank iPay enhanced digital offerings to small businesses. Uh, 92 million euro grant to ease COVID-19 impact. It's also another story. They've got the market summary, uh, consumer price, inflation, interest rate, Ghana Stock Exchange, the currencies, US dollar, uh, now 5.7 Ghana CDs. The euro is 6.6, .6, pound 7.2. The yuan, 0.8. A3, and then the South African run as well. Uh, they've got the commodities as well. So you can grab the business finder and check out these market summaries. And then the business financial times front page with managed debt stock better, according to Dr. Baumia. Uh, this is GIFA to invest 600 million US dollars in export development strategy. Expect to or expect to rake in $25 billion in 10 years, will be law abiding of a Reta on a Japa IPO suspension. Oh, that's interesting. That's a, uh, is this the first statement that he's made after the 
special prosecutor's letter to the Ministry of Finance. Says Finance Minister Ken Oforiata has said that even though he's yet to officially see the letter from the Office of the Special Prosecutor, as, as said yesterday afternoon, advising him to hold on the launch of the initial public offer for Ijapa royalties due to some outstanding corruption risk assessment of the deal, his ministry would be law-abiding and ensure that all legal ramifications are cleared. Uh, there's a quote where he talks about not haven't officially seen the letter. According to him, the nation's plan to launch the IPO this year is still on course, as there would be no better time than now. The plan is to list a Japa by the end of the year, and I stick to it until I can't move more. I think it is an incredible period, the highest gold prizes the world has ever seen. If you have that resources, what do you do with it? Do you bury it underground, or do you use it for the benefits of our people. This is all direct quotes uh, from him. You can read the rest of it. It's on page three in the Business and Financial Times newspaper. So the Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata, responding in the way to the Special Prosecutor's letter, even though he says he has not seen it. On the back page, Senate is outstanding Ghanaian-owned corporate organization in 20. 19 who's given them this accolade you can check out the details uh, second deputy governor receives glitz africa corporate personality of the year as well joseph do you have any more papers before we do much online just send you the daily guide quickly the oh. front page of the daily guide says nana fires trouble makers and will defeat ndc again is coming from dr balmia president cuts sword for kumasi obwasi railway line and courts throws out ndc over one day Registration and the last one on the front page says cleaner confesses Legon lecturers killing. Uh, the back page has a story about a team that is not a good team. It says hearts ready for fresh season. Uh, don't ask me to explain why it's not a good team. Ah, but why. the headline doesn't say a team that is not a good team. No, I've, I read the headline. The headline is hearts ready for fresh season. So where is the? the what was my about? my review of that story? Seriously. Yeah. Messi explains Barca mutiny also on the back page. And uh, this other story, Moreno chases Dyer to toilet, uh, fights Lampard again. I was watching the <laughs> football match. Charlie, and Moreno can be so dramatic. You know, he, he took his time for the guy, but, you know, immediately a guy left. They almost scored a goal. So that was when he quickly <laughs> rushed in to drag the guy, saying that, Masa, Masa, you can turn down, I'm open some to get the guy to come back. I don't know. Listen, if... If Chelsea had won that game, I don't know what he would have done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, so that is it for the Daily Guide, uh, that Moreno story there. Mm. Yeah. Um, no news one. No news one. No. Okay. All right. Let's do myjawonline.com. Uh, before we bring you myjawonline.com, when it's ready, we'll bring it to you. But remember the U.S. debates. We talked about it. Uh, the organizers of the debates are changing some of the rules because of the chaotic nature this first one turned out uh, to be. They've got two more presidential debates coming up. So if you check the BBC, uh, the BBC online page, it says the commission that oversees US presidential debate says it will change the format to ensure the remaining two encounters between Donald Trump and Joe Biden are more orderly. Uh, one new measure could be to cut the microphone if the candidate try to interrupt each other. Uh, and this announcement obviously followed Tuesday's ill-tempered, they put it, debates that descended into squabbling, bickering, and insult. President Trump's team has already criticized the commission's plans. The tone and tactics of the first presidential debate were criticized across the U.S. and around the world. Some of us found it very entertaining. I was surprised to see uh, somebody actually stayed up, Ghanaian in Ghana, to watch the debate. I said, seriously? You did? Obviously, he didn't expect that it would turn out the way that it turned out. He was disappointed in the end. Let's do majoronline.com. Do we, do we know if we're having presidential debates in Ghana? We are not having. The vice president responded to that yesterday. He said it would be interesting, but it's not necessary. And that a debate is taking place uh, wherever their candidates are going to at the constituency level everywhere. But that's not a debate that is being called for. The debate that is being called for is to have the MPPs, Tana Kufado and the NDCs, uh, John Mahama on the same platform. The vice president says... Not necessary, but it will be interesting if it were to happen. Yeah, so that is it in terms of uh, the debate, whether mm. it is happening or not. So there may be a debate, but it means that they are not likely to find 
uh, on the platform debating. You know the uh, Imani multimedia collaboration with the uh, independent can it was exciting. I mean, we need the presidential debate. See, it serves a lot of purposes. There are people who we know have already made up their minds. They will vote for NDC or MPP or CPP or PNC. You know, it's, it's, it's actually strange that we are debating a debate. I mean, a debate is when yeah. they go to the constituency, they are always debating. You, you, you take your opponent's track record, you speak to it. And so it's, it shouldn't be a debate about a debate. It should just happen. Thank you. Just Maybe happen. we need like a commission just like the U.S. Yeah, the U.S. They do. because Fair, fair point. Ordinarily, Trump would not come and say he's debating you. Yeah. But it's because there is this, you know, there's, there's an institution mandated to do that. So Because in the past, some of the parties have questioned the platforms. And so the NDC in 2016, they did the GBC one. They opted mm. out of the IEA one because they had some concerns. And so... If there, there is an entity that both sides could trust also and want to and I take the election, I mean, yeah. uh, the debates, that could also happen. Yeah, I agree with you. Sometimes, just like it happened with the Biden, Trump, it can be entertaining. <laughs> Let's do my Joe online dot com. And then we'll come back and talk about Bernard Mona properly because he lost the chairmanship uh, position of his... Why are you making faces? I'm not making faces. I'm, oh, you're smiling. I was turning to... I'm not smiling. Bernard Mona you know is my smiling? friend. Don't laugh. Why are you setting me up against the... the I'm I, not. It's, I like it's just the your reaction. It's a, it's a powerful political It's just your party. reaction to the news, you know? But let's do... Okay, let's... That's Bernard Mona there. Uh, he attempted to be the chairman of the PNC again, uh, but that didn't happen. He didn't succeed in, in that. However, he's actually the presidential candidate for Nadoli Kaliu. So perhaps... This would give him enough time to concentrate on getting to parliament. The parliamentary candidate. The parliamentary I mean. candidate, yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, uh, which we haven't highlighted, we haven't talked much about. I mean, he's uh, mostly associated to the chairman or the chairmanship position of the PNC. The former MP, uh, David Apacera, has been elected as the party's flag bearer. Mm -hmm. uh, for some time now, it had been. Uh, we had had Dr. Edward Mahama, we had Hassan Ayaga at a point, mm -hmm. and now uh, we have David Apasara. He's a former member of parliament. Uh, he was in parliament around a period that the president and uh, Mr. Mahama were in parliament as well. And so he, he's come back, he wants to be the party's flag bearer. And I mean, the PNC, Bernard Mona, very vibrant, I mean, individual. He, he, he was very active and more often than not was participating in activities that were led uh, by the other political parties, not the PNC necessarily, but he was always the PNC was always available to support a cause that they believed in. And so, I mean, the expectations that a new gentleman who has replaced him will be able to uh, bring that uh, vibrancy to play and make the PNC head on. That could also be issues. a challenge because you know, uh, Mr. Mona has joined in many conversations. Uh, a lot of times, we say that the smaller political parties don't take part in national discourse. But he's one person who has been very consistent. And I think the media has also reached out a lot of times to him because of how, I guess, we appreciate his contribution. So it will be a tough job uh, for the person stepping in his shoes in terms of would he also get the same exposure? Would he be invited on platforms to make his views known on behalf of the party? But I wish Mr. Mr. Bernard Mona well. I would love to see you in Parliament. I guess because uh, uh, Mr. Alban Bakning is no longer uh, going, it's very open, so you have an opportunity uh, to go to Parliament. We wish you well. Uh, sorry for your loss, but congratulations, you may be going to Parliament. Let's do uh, myjoeonline.com. This story is on myjoeonline.com, by the way. But the President, uh, we've talked about it. Joseph gave us the brief. Voter secessionists, we will deal with them. Security agencies up to task according to the president. And then we've also updated you on Professor Bennis uh, uh, Cleaner's alleged confessing uh, or confessing his involvement in murder, uh, in the murder of the professor. I'd like to see the killing of the professor. Uh, Kufuado has nothing to show after borrowing 140 billion Ghana CDs, according to former president and flag bearer of the NDC. John Dramani Mahama. If you haven't seen our dance, then you have not toured your own backyard. 
Baumia Jabs Mohama as he appeared on Ekosi saying on Asempa 94.7. Yesterday, the country was quiet. They were listening to Dr. Baumia on Asempa. Uh, still on the secessionist uh, issue, uh, government will not negotiate with criminals. Also said by the vice president. And then on the national science and mass quiz, high scoring St. Peter's. Uh, Steamrolls, uh, no, Brecum and Notre Dame Girls Senior High School. We've got a full conversation on the National Science and Mass Quiz, and that's always brought to us. Ketsi, Bright Senior High School in Cochran, Tumi, DBS Roofing, Adonko Hand Sanitizer, and Adonko Next Level Energy Drink. We will tell you what you missed yesterday, how Infantipim were sent parking and how they'll have to come back from the bottom next year, God willing. And then we'll tell you what to expect today. Uh, we're going into another stage from tomorrow. So all that will be covered when we join Maxwell Agbagba from Legon, the University of Ghana, Legon. Back to my johnline.com. Let's finish the rest of the stories there. Uh, this was from two days ago. You still can catch up with uh, the former MPs. Well, his... Uh, his position on uh, on this, because you I'm, I'm talking about legally Ghana doesn't exist. Uh, and then photos. Shall we open how uh, MPP supporters who mob Baumia at the multimedia group premises? Let's see some of the photos as the vice president came in yesterday. Uh, and, and of course, the cutting of uh, sword for some project. We'll show you pictures of, were you here when Dr. Baumia came yesterday? Yes, I was around. I was just uh, getting ready to leave. And I'm sure you was, regret it. <laughs> it was very difficult <laughs> getting out of the parking lot and getting onto the main road. The roads had been blocked and uh, just when I was moving, he was coming from oh, the Should traffic light area. One. That's so. the time I left. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine. The, 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 the motor riders, I mean, they came in their numbers and, and I mean... Uh, have we legalized it already? But these were not commercial riders ah, in ah, Oh, <laughs> okay, there they riders. are. Okay, yeah. we'll see. Oh, apologies. I'm looking at the pictures of air, and I thought you were all watching the same thing. So this is Dr. Baumi as he came in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so those are the riders I was talking about. And so, oh, okay. Yeah, and so this one, okay, they're not wearing masks, but this one is, is, is legal, you know, unless they take money from them. That's the, <laughs> <laughs> that's the part of this whole conversation that confuses a lot of people. It's okay to put another person at the back, but immediately you take cash, it becomes yeah. illegal. Let's see some more pictures, shall we? So this this is not like us, or my way I say us. Okay, the reason, see, Asempa is our sister station. Yeah. We're, we're in the same building, so this is this is us. And this was not, I didn't see this. I left around 1 p.m. yesterday, and I didn't see people. I only saw security personnel. I guess they were coming to prepare. The advance party. Yeah, but, but for, you know, for the vice president. And then this happened later in the afternoon. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> okay, guys. This is where we have to end the review segment of our show. Joseph Akable, what is there anything happening? Anything happening yes, uh, today? Yes, following up on the Canada Japan is doctor supposed to be in court uh, this morning. So that's what I'll be following up on. To check uh, to explain the COVID 19 post COVID 19 complications that he spoke about, the doctor mm. will be explaining things to the uh, justice uh, later today. Okay, and then he would take a decision as yeah. to whether or not he was going to hold procedures. Yes, mm. okay. What's the name of the judge again? A uh, justice Amos Wunta Wuni. All right, good morning to you, um, our Lord. Yes, yeah, we greet you. We love your procedure and we've been following keenly. All right. Uh, <laughs> a good morning to Elom Ashiagbo and wife Juliana Ankuche Ashiagbo of Vaku Senior High School. Stay with us. We've got sports with Oriku Ampofo coming your way. Uh, and then we've got Voters Voice after sports. So kindly stay with us. Hello, good morning and welcome to AM Sports with me, Oreko Ampofo. Hope you had a fantastic evening and having an even better morning, although it might be raining. But we start off with our first story today, uh, which is on a bit of a sad note because it has to do uh, with the kids who died 
in the offensive accident that happened a few weeks ago. Now, the latest update coming in today is that the children who passed away would be buried today. And joining us on the phone is Professor Peter Chumis, who is the Director General of the National Sports Authority. Hi, Professor Chumis, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you doing today? Uh, it's another day, and uh, we're thankful to the Almighty God. Uh, we are all well. Okay. And on our, on our way uh, to office, as you declared, uh, we are all getting there to support the family. Yes. Uh, in, in, in terms of the support, when you say we are on our way, uh, do you know some of the delegates uh, who would be coming from uh, you know, government and the National Sports Authority, apart from yourself? Right. Uh, my, 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 my greetings to you, uh, Mr. Listeners. Um, you know, about a couple of, uh, of weeks ago, we all had this very bad news uh, in relation to an accident which occurred, uh, which included uh, some youngsters. I mean, our own juvenile uh, code sports uh, team, and, and, and unfortunately, uh, about eight of them perished even at the spot. Uh, luckily, uh, with the support of, uh, well, we should thank Almighty God uh, for the, that uh, opportunity for government to be able to support those who were injured. And I think with the efficient uh, ambulance services we are having currently, we were able to uh, lift uh, many of the injured uh, to various places uh, to seek uh, uh, additional health care. Uh, some were actually sent to Konkanochi, also there with those hospitals and clinics within the catchment area. Uh, thanks to those who were, were transferred to those places, all of them uh, got uh, treated, and, and many of them have been discharged. In fact, currently, uh, as we speak, there's none within uh, very intensive care, and, and, and they, are, they are okay. I mean, with a number numbering about uh, 36 uh, by my checks, now I think uh, all of them are actually responding very well. Others have been actually been discharged home and they are continuing with the treatment. The eight, that passed on. You know, when it did happen, I led the government delegation to visit them in hospitals and also in their homes. And, and government uh, pledged that, uh, uh, though we may not be able to bring back uh, the, the loss, I mean, the lives that were lost, but the government will come in uh, to show that, that some of the burden uh, with these uh, families and, and especially with the with the preparation of their funeral. So we sought the the, the support uh, and, and, and the permission of the family and then the Omaini of the of the of the traditional area Nama Gafia uh, that government will want to really conduct even a mass barrier for those so that we can pay our very uh, uh, respect uh, due respect to the, the, the so God, that we expect you know, have been stars uh, in these nations, uh, football uh, uh, um, industry, and hoping that we're expecting to have people of uh, of uh, of uh, Abidipeles and uh, and the likes. Uh, unfortunately, the, their lives were cut short. But government will still want to continue and help with it. We were given the, the permission to do the mass barrier, and this morning, as we speak, uh, that is going to take place uh, at the offensive. And all the costs uh, in relation to this uh, barrier and services uh, that will be conducted will be will be absorbed by government. In addition to that, government also has some packages also for the families who lost their their, their loved ones, and and also those who were injured. Some funds for them to be able to to be uh, to, to 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 be to be supported as far as they they continue with their treatment at home and also in hospitals. So in short, government is fully. Uh, absorbing all costs relating to this particular accident, and we believe that uh, uh, measures, proper measures, will be will, will be strengthened, and ho hopefully we don't we don't we don't see this this, this kind of uh, uh, incident again in, in Ghana football. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Professor Peter Chumesi, for your time. All the best with your travel as well. Okay. We hope to see all okay, so that was Professor Peter Chumesi, and he's the Director General of the National Sports Authority, and uh, he would be part of the delegation sent out uh, for the mass burial of the eight footballers, the young footballers who lost their lives in the offensive accident that happened a few weeks ago. May they so rest in peace as they are buried today. Moving on to some other stories, all roads would lead to the Daman Golf Course on November 25th as the seventh edition of the Goldfields PGA Championship comes off. Here's a report by Joy Sports Asari Bidiaku.
in the United Kingdom qualifiers will be competing for the coveted title in the seventh edition of the Goldfields PGA Championship. For the first time since the tournament began in 2014, golfers competed in qualifiers due to limited slots available. The qualifiers, which came off between September 14 and 24, attracted over 58 professional golfers across the country. The winning cash prize is 40,000 Ghana cities for regulars and 9,000 Ghana cities for seniors, same as last year's tournament. The total cash prize to be awarded is 167,000 Ghana cities. This year's Goldfields PGA Championship will not be held with the usual fanfare due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, Alfred Barco, Executive Vice President and Head of Goldfields West Africa, has assured participants of their safety during the tournament. Goldfields, you know we've got two operations, one at Taco, one at Dama, where we are going to have the tournament. Um, what we've done is, as part of our measures, we have what we call the isolation centers at both operations. So if someone is positive, we've got this isolation center that we can isolate this individual quickly. We've also got our medical staff that will attend to this individual. So that is uh, all uh, organized and in place. Uh, I must commend the organizers. They've done a your man's job because at the beginning of the year when we went into the COVID I was wondering in my head myself whether we were going to be able to actually organize uh, this year's uh, tournament so for the organizers to stall with COVID around with all the measures we have all the protocols we have to still come up with uh, an arrangement for us to still uh, host this tournament, uh, they deserve a, a huge uh, commendation. So I would like to say a big thanks to the uh, organizers. Last year, about 14 professional golfers from Nigeria, Ivory Coast, Togo, Zimbabwe, Senegal and Gabon competed in the tournament. Unfortunately, Christopher Francis, the 2019 champion from Nigeria, will not be able to defend his title because this year's event is open to Ghanaian golfers only. Thanks to Rico Ampofo with sports. He is back on air tomorrow, God willing. But there's plenty of sports on myjohnline.com and more later on at 2 p.m. Let's do Volta's voice as we do every Thursday and Tuesdays. Today, the concentration is on women. Now, as the 2011 UN General Assembly Resolution on Women's Political Participation notes, women in every part of the world continue to be largely marginalized from the political sphere often as a result of discriminatory laws, practices, attitudes, and gender stereotypes. Low levels of education sometimes, lack of access to health care, and the disproportionate effect of poverty on women. Currently, out of the 275 legislators in the 7th Parliament of the 4th Republic, only 36 are females. Obviously not impressive for a country touted as the beacon of democracy in Africa. On Voters Voice today, we put the question out uh, in Kumasi. Would you vote for a female candidate even if that person is not representing your political party? Here are the voices. Yes, I will vote for a woman, only depending on the political party she belongs to. Yes, when we come to Ghana, females are more than the male. And when you put a, a female at a, at, in the office, that female works very well as compared to they are male counterparts. Yeah, I will vote for a female 
to be a president, whether in my political party or not. Because about women, women have this kind of heart that men does not have. They have a good, women have a good heart. They have a cool heart. They have a soft heart than men do. They will, they will rather hear the cry of the people rather than the men. Women will rather act to what they have to do more than what the men do. Oh, my two man, say, oh, yeah, like me, no bits me a year, Jumana, a bit me a boy, my idea, and found when you are your metal woman. Because, or bad ye, you could be true, you do this or bad ye, or the idea, you ma, I am my silos. Oh, my silos, no bars or yard, ya, or the wish him. Because, or ye ma, like, fierce be a year, or man, we say, or bound to me, you say, no, if you hope. I would vote for the person based on the ideas she's bringing on board or the or her manifesto, let me say it like that. Not necessarily because she's a female. So about your president or my way more. In can mean him the only dear a yeah, a babwa, my man of cramp or any age. No mom, me party and so ni me party me party ya mint mint to man. So I'm a party any overstand I'm a party dia and the mom can say my two man but a master by your president. About my mind, I had a Very interesting open voices from Kumasi. Uh, let's get on Zoom and speak to our guest, Dr. Abina Yeboa Banin, who is a lecturer with the School of Communication Studies, the University of Ghana. We also have a political scientist joining us shortly. But good morning to you, Dr. Banin, if you can hear me. Thank you for your time. Good morning. I can hear you and good morning to all the listeners and viewers. Okay, great. I'm not sure how much of the voices you have there, what we played back from Kumasi on their views on whether or not they will vote for a candidate, uh, even if the person wasn't representing their political parties. Uh, largely, people said if they represented their parties, then they would vote for them. Um, so question is, and I, and I wonder in terms of the communication, do you just go out and let them know because you're a woman and because you have all these qualities that largely people say women have and that's why it will be good for them to get into leadership and governance do you tell them that or you're still doing the party thing um i i wish i could say the former but we have to recognize the reality also i think and the reality as you found from the people in the vox pop is that for the most part Ghanaians are voting for parties, not necessarily candidates, so that it becomes a question of who the party is fielding as the candidate. Um, that's not to say the candidate doesn't matter at all, because I'm sure that there are some people that if a party decided to field as candidates, then some of the voters will be disinclined to vote. For the, but for the most part, from what we are seeing from the Vox Pop, and it will replicate if you did a lot of studies on this. Uh, most people are voting because they are NDC or MPP or PPP or CPP or PNC. For that matter, for a woman to cut through, she needs the party to be giving that platform to her. Um, you need that platform to stand on, I imagine, before your person and the qualities that you want to sell can become, if you like, points that you can leverage. In the absence of the party, it becomes, I think, difficult for the women, irrespective of how qualified, how able they are in context Ghana. I think it becomes slightly difficult for them to sell themselves based on what they can do or who they are. 
you first need a party platform to stand on before those ones can be activated, I think. Mm. Stay with us, uh, Dr. Yabu Abani. I also have Dr. Amachi Boateng, who's a political scientist with the KNUST, also joining us by phone. Good morning to you, Dr. Amachi Boateng. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you can hear me, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. So we have, currently we have 37 females in parliament. The NPP elected less than 30. The NDC also elected less than 30 candidates. If you just look at these numbers, how many are we likely to see in Parliament? Would it be more than the 36 or less, do you think? I think um, we've got to look at the areas where the <coughs> female um, candidates are really contesting. If um, they come from the strong group, then we know that the danger. We've got to know that uh, the constituencies generally, like, uh, you know, um, uh, the earlier speaker said, vote, you know, along party lines. There are a few constituencies that are swing. So these are, I think, what are going to tell us. In a way, uh, it should be possible to tell ahead of ahead of the election, you know, on the basis of the constituencies that one is uh, operating for, whether one is going to win or one is going to lose. The history, you know, uh, is going to guide us. Uh, in the areas of strength constituencies, then we'll just hold them at say. And, and, and use the, uh, I mean, the strongholds, you know, to do our analysis. So I think that is what, what is going to tell. Essentially, people vote for their party, you know, and, and, and it's, it's interesting. At times they tell you that, look, this constituency, you know, um, if you like, it has been voting in line with this particular political tradition. And so irrespective of the candidate that, you know, they present to us, we vote for the person. At times they use terms like even if they bring an animal, you know, who, who <laughs> still say, you know, that is it. So um, uh, I think that is the, the, uh, mm. a major uh, defining factor of the di dynamic, you know, uh, guiding the uh, voting pattern. Okay. How do we break through here? And I don't want to talk about affirmative action bill or any piece of legislation <clears throat> that we're yet to see. I'm talking about the now because there are quite a number of women who will be on the ballots. How do we, how do we draw people's, or is it too late perhaps, to get people to focus on what the, the likely impact of women representatives, for instance, so that they can vote for them? And I'll let you take this, uh, Dr. Abinaya Boabani. Well, I think that um, uh, a number of Options. Some of them, we may have lost largely the opportunity there was to have taken advantage of them. And when I say that, I mean that the parties may have lost part of the opportunity in not consciously um, getting in a lot more um, women candidates going into 2020 election. And that being the case, the women simply won't be that many on the ballot sheet for people to even consider. But I think that that hadn't, having been done, we can't resolve that um, for now. Going forward, though, it, it will not hurt for the parties, the few women that they are fielding, for the parties to proactively promote them slightly a bit more than maybe they're doing on the campaign platforms for the, mm -hmm. the males. So when the the president uh, mounts the NPP stage, when uh, um, 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 John Mahama mounts the NDC stage, when the other um, primary candidates mount their stages, a word or two to remind Ghanaians that we need to build this country on a balanced footing. So the women who are contesting in your constituencies, support them. You know, I think one word or two on the campaign platform coming from these big ones may not hurt. It would at least orient people that they want these women with them when they win power mm. to work with them. But I think also there's opportunity on the platform we're talking um, right now. So the media is where I am headed. I think there's a lot of opportunity for the media to also um, join the discourse and frame. Um, we know that when the media decide that something is important and hammer it enough in a certain way, sometimes they are able to get people to start thinking 
in that direction. And so this conversation we're having a lot more of it may orient Ghanaians to begin to take a second look at the idea of women as, as leaders in the country. It's not just about their candidature, but it's, it's set within a whole background of what people think a, a leader has to come to the table with, a political leader has to come to the table with. And sometimes people thinking the women will not be tough enough or the women may not be able to rise to the call, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that some of these discussions, but a lot more of it within the media, mm. where we get the relevant parties increasingly talking about and affirming the need to have women at the table and also affirming the capacity and capability of these women mm. would help to reorient um, Ghanaians to begin to take the idea of women in political leadership slightly more seriously than it has been. Mm. Let me ask you, same, uh, Dr. Machibuate, what would be your recommendations? Uh, it's an interesting thing. Realize that society has been patriarchal. All over the world, you don't have many women participating actively in the politics of their country. I mean, playing key roles in leadership positions. They are not there. The interesting thing with us in Africa is that traditional, you know, we, in a way, understand the role of women. They mm. play a very key role. They occupy a particular high seat that is not contested by men. But that is it, and that is all. You go to the palace, and then the third chiefs are all male figures with only one woman, you know, joining them. So uh, this has been the situation over the years. We need to consciously break this. So I, I like the way you capture it. How do we break this? I think it will take leadership. It will take leadership uh, to, in a way, governor society generally and bring in, like, uh, you know, uh, my colleague said, uh, the media and everybody. But in the relevant political party, if you have a leader image who consciously works on this, then the women uh, members of the party are nature. The party consciously encourages their women from the university to begin to take key roles in, uh, you know, various uh, public political activities and offices. They encourage them. And then in the party, do they encourage them? And at the primary level, they are encouraged to come out. If they lack resources, then they should be resolved. We got to consciously do this. So I think. You need leadership and you need social engineering. We should do this consciously, mm. you know, to give up the numbers. Okay. Dr. Abinaya Mwabane, how much of the argument that those that we have in Parliament, we've seen very few uh, people, uh, very few of them being, being that vibrant, how much of this argument is legitimate, uh, you know, to get people to believe in women representatives? Well, first, I think part of the job is to let Ghanaians understand that the, the work of parliament, and I don't pretend to understand fully the work of parliamentarians, but to let Ghanaians come to understand that the work of parliamentarians is not all about the, the talking in public. Um, there are people who are not publicly known to be speaking all the time, but who are also very, very active working in, in Parliament. And so we can't all become the front burners. Some would be back burners and, and, and do the, the work nonetheless. So the fact that there are women or men also in Parliament whose voices we don't hear all the time does not necessarily mean that they are not working. If we do that, then we actually turn our leadership into lip service. Let them come and talk to us. Let them come and say big things in the media. And that's how we will measure them as being effective in parliament. I'm not too sure it's as simple as that. That being the case, I, I, I guess that I'm saying I don't necessarily buy into the idea that if women have been in parliament that we didn't hear of, then it means that if they go, they are not going to be very helpful. They're not going to be effective anyway. There are other things that they are doing in the parliament. And so um, we can't disregard their effectiveness or their ability to, to work in, in parliament. That said, though, I, I, I also have to add that, that given us this is how Ghanaians are somehow evaluating 
their political leaders. Ghanaians expect their political leaders to be visible, to be talking on issues. Mm -hmm. That's how we want to see that they are working. Be, be that notion right or wrong. It is the reality. That being the case, therefore, um, going forward, I'd imagine that the, the few women who are headed to parliament, unfortunately, uh, it wouldn't hurt them to, to work on their, their branding, to, to get people who are versed in the area, to help them with how to present themselves, how to package their leadership stance and their presence and visibility, etc. So that as much as they do the real work of parliament, you know, they are also seen to be doing it mm -hmm. because um, it appears that it's not enough to be doing. In Ghana, you also need to be seen, I guess everywhere in the world also, you also need to be seen to be doing it. And so in, in as much as it's not for me, that legitimate to query their effectiveness in parliament only on the basis of we are not hearing them speak. Mm. Um, I'd also want to concede to the fact that they may have to pay some attention to how they position and brand and present themselves to the public. Okay. Uh, Dr. Matibuati, on the ground, have we had the few women in parliament being that effective so that it is encouraging for others to say, oh, let's get more women in parliament? Uh, I'd like to believe that has been the case. Generally, um, a few, I mean, the few women in Parliament, you know, have come out as um, quite uh, effective. Generally, politics has got to do with influence. You know, in Parliament, essentially, they take decisions. And the ability to get people to support a particular cause becomes, uh, you know, you know, issue uh, at the center of the debate. And women are seen to be very effective when it comes to influencing you know, people to, you know, uh, consider uh, issues. And I think they have been doing that. Um, on the issue of visibility, uh, they are known. And, and, and some of them, some of them even did come out, you know, and, and, and people got to know that, look, this particular woman, although she was the only person there here, the name Hawa Yakubu comes out, you know, clearly. And, 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 and many people who were not necessarily following parliamentary debate got to know that, you know, she was effective. On the ground in their constituencies, too, they are seen to be, you know, uh, you know, strong and tough. They are able to address issues that matter. So generally speaking, I don't think the issue of uh, capacity, you know, uh, ha ha has been, uh, uh, you know, is the main thing. I don't think so. I think it's their, uh, their desire to be part, act, to play a big part in the political process. And, and if you like, the challenges there. Because uh, generally, generally we tend to you know, give women some characterization when they try to be a very active, vocal. I think some of these things are social negative tasks are, are what we should be dealing with rather than, you know, their being effective and mm. their capacity to do well and stuff like that, their mm. visibility and those things. I don't think those are the issues. Mm. I think there are social factors which affect, you know, women coming out. And, you know, people, people who say all sort of things. With, with, with women who, you know, play active mm -hmm. role in, in, in public, sure. uh, uh, you know, uh, stuff and stuff. I think these are the issues that we've got mm. to address. Mm. Okay, well, I'd like to say thank you in the absence of any final words that you'd love to share with us, uh, Dr. Abinay Yabuabani. To the polls 2020, I'd like Ghanaians to remember that there will be Ghana after 2020. So let's not burn it in our constituencies. What you destroy, you would live beyond 2020 to have to face. Um, the women candidates who have been fielded are just as capable and are ready to work to serve Ghana. And it is our, in our interest that the, the, the two parties, both the male party and the female party are at the table when issues come up for discussion and decision making. And so we should support them. Mm. Um, Dr. Machibwati, your final thoughts? Yeah, I would say that actually, Ghanaians should be prepared to punish political activists uh, who really don't play by the rules. And we punish them by not voting for them. On the issue of women, I'd like to say that we know uh, the, the capacity of, of our mothers in, in keeping you know, the home going. Uh, they are able to support 
to our fathers over the years. And so we know they are effective. We know if we have many of them in, in, in our public uh, uh, institutions, they are going to do well. And so generally, when they, when they come out, we should appreciate that, support them, and, and go them into you know, a political uh, office. I thank you for your time, Dr. Amache Boateng, political scientist with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, also joining us, lecturer at the University of Ghana, Communication uh, School of Communication Studies, Dr. Abinaya Boabani. I thank you all for your time on Voters Voice today. Uh, just before we wrap up on this segment, if you missed the voices we played from Kumasi, here we go again. <music> Yes, I will vote for a woman. Only depending on the political party she belongs to. Yes. When we come to Ghana, females are more than the male. And when you put a, a female at, a, at in an office, that female works very well as compared to they are male counterparts. I am party by the Ametoman. I am a vote for a female to be a president, whether in my political party or not. Because about women, women have this kind of heart that men does not have. They have a good, women have a good heart, they have a cool heart, they have a soft heart than men do. They will, they will rather hear the cry of the people rather than the men. Women will rather act to what they have to do more than what the men do. Oh, my two women, say, oh, yeah, like me, she. No bits me a year, Jumana, a bit me a boy, my idea, and family or bow, a metal woman. Because Obadi, you could be soon with whom is Obadi, would the idea anima, and I'm my silos. Oh, my silos, no bows or yard, ya, or the Hushim. Because or Yemma, like fierce be a year war or men will say or bound to me, you say no, if you hope. I would vote for the person based on the ideas she's bringing on board or the or her manifesto, let me say it like that. Not necessarily because she's a female. So about by your president or my way more. You can even name the only dear a yeah, a babwa, my man of cramp or any adi. No mom, me party and so name a party me party ya mint mean to man. So I'm a party and I'll be standing I'm on a party dia and the more can say my two man but a master by your president. Bright Senior High School in Cochrane to me DBS roofing, uh, roofing papa pafi, a donko hand sanitizer, and a donko next level bitters. Ketsi of our sponsors, we cross over now to the University of Ghana Business School. Maxwell Awawa will tell us what we missed with the 1-8 stage, the competitions yesterday, and on the final day, what we will experience, most likely, and then what we will look forward to on Friday, uh, quarter finals. Maxwell Agbaba, you can hear me. A very good morning to you. Uh, we didn't, did we see or did we not see Infantipim going out yesterday? I guess it was the biggest fall yesterday. Yes, exactly. Uh, that was the biggest um, contest for yesterday. Well, <laughs> let me say some people saw it, you know, um, coming. Um, for those who had opportunity uh, to see in fan Supreme School at the regional competition, and also for those who had opportunity to see them during the trials, um, they were not so confident, you know, um, of the team that they would be able to, you know, beat Kumasi Academy, and. Um, I think that was the case. That was what happened, you know, um, yesterday. But, I mean, Infancy Pim would forever be uh, one of the NSMQ giants. So a lot of people... Um 
predicted um, that they would win that particular contest. But right from round one, we saw that the Kumasi Academy guys really came prepared, you know, for that particular contest. And they lived up to the billing um, as a seeded, you know, school. At the end of the day, um, in Fansipim School, um, they were sent packing. And yesterday, the whole of the day, <laughs> I mean, if you monitored social media platform, um, Twitter, it was all about Buchi, 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 Buchi. And even this morning, they are still trending. <laughs> I mean, people are still talking about them um, on Twitter and other social uh, media platforms. Now, let me talk, Ma about, let's talk about okay. um, yesterday's content. Maxwell, before content you continue, I've got a question for you, Maxwell. I've got a question. There was another thing trending in terms of uh, not being able to spell their own school name. Was that from a previous contest or this was from yesterday? Can you clear that up for us? Well, uh, well that, that was from a previous, you know, competition. I think about two years ago. Yeah. But people, you know, people were just gathering materials just to throw, you know, in fun spin school. So, I mean, as part of the materials they were gathering, I'm sure they probably went into the archives and they found that one and they decided to use it. So, it wasn't really from yesterday's contest. It's from actually a, a contest that happened, I think, two or three years ago, Mamavi. Hey, thanks for clearing that up for us. We're not taking the shine out of Kumasi Academy, though. We knew they were strong even before the competition. So they absolutely deserve their win. <laughs> exactly. We knew, we knew, we knew, we knew that, um, you know, they were really strong before the, you know, contest and they actually deserve, you know, um, that win. We say congratulations to the guys from Comerica. They made it happen, you know, <laughs> yesterday. Hopefully um, they'll do more, you know, in the subsequent um, um, contest. But let me just quickly run you through um, the contest that we had for um, yesterday. Um, the last contest um, here at the University of Ghana Business School sent Peter's SHS, St. Peter's SHS um, against Brickum Brink SHS, Notre Dame Girls SHS. St. Peter's SHS had 68 points. Yes, 68 points. And that's the highest we've seen um, at the one eighth stage of the um, ongoing competition. Brickum SHS just had a poetry, 28 points. And then Notre Dame Girls SHS had just um, 10 points. Um, once again, let me say that St. Peter's SHS lived up to the billing and up to the prediction that many, um, there were some who were actually saying that they were going to get like 17 points because we know that Michael O'Bain, um, he was in form two when he first mounted the NSMQ stage and he's still representing, you know, St. Peter. So he comes in with a lot of experience that I'm sure his opponents, you know, um, do not have. And even in Form 2, you know, when he represented um, St. Peter's SHS, he made it all the way to the finals. So coming for the second time, he's definitely someone who is going to push, you know, St. You know, Peter's, uh, you know, uh, he's really going to take them far. That's what a lot of pundits are saying. And you can't take it away, you know, from him. So it wasn't really shocking that they won their contest with 68 points and then Breakroom SHS 28 points and then the Notre Dame Girls SHS um, 10 points. Now, Maxwell, let me give you the other contest that Maxwell, before you move on, before you move on, Maxwell, let's stay with St. Peter's. This is the highest score that we've seen in the contest so far. So far, so far, this is the highest we've seen so far at the one eighth, you know, stage um, of the competition. This is the highest so far. Did was it was it just uh, what did Cass, that? Cast still uh, Kumasi Anglican. Do they still? Okay, no, I was just going to ask Maxwell what made the difference for them. Is this simply, and we've talked about this before, is this simply because you have contestants who were saying form two who took part? and then they come back when they are in Form 3. Is that just a trick, or these guys are super intelligent? Uh, I, I think it's... Okay, so um, that is the trick. That is one of the reasons why, um, you know, we can say that they won with higher point. But also, it depends on the opponents that you meet in the contest. So if you're competing against... Um, if you're competing against a school like Premper College, a strong side, and then uh, Kumasi Anglican Secondary School, also a strong side. It would be very difficult, you know, uh, um, to be picking um, some of their questions, which would be like bonus, you know, mm. for you. 
because they are also good and it's likely or it's possible that they'll be getting most of their answers right so you wouldn't be picking up their bonuses and adding it to your points um, when it comes to some of the rounds speed race i mean they'll be ringing the bell you'd also be ringing the bell there'll be that competition mm -hmm. and you'll not be able to pick as many points as you would but if you meet a comparatively you know um, weaker side the possibility that you pick up the bonus questions answer more questions more than they do you know it's very high okay and you're likely to get more points than they would get so sometimes also it depends on the opponents that you come up against you know um in the contest mm, yeah absolutely so um the other contest that shocked a lot of people ola mm. girls shs who chemu shs and incense roses hss ola shs who um i remember in the regions in the volta region um one of the quiz moderators, um, Madam Gladys Schwinger, actually had cause to um, advise the girls to go back to the drawing board and make sure they are prepared for the one eight stage. Um, it appears that the girls really heeded um, that advice, and now they are cruising smoothly um, to the quarterfinals, which is going to be the first time, actually, that girls SHS who will be, you know, um, in the quarterfinals of the National Science and Maths Quiz. Um, at the, uh, the preliminary stage in the Volta region, they had just about 27 points to win their contest, and they came back um, at the one eight stage to win with 46 points. And it wasn't just 46 points, they actually beat a seeded school like Chemu, Chemu Senior High School, and then um, St. Roses. St. Roses SHS, we can maybe say, okay, St. Roses, um, they came into the competition at the latter stages when a Brie Girls SHS dropped out of the contest. You know, so we can, we can pardon them. But Chemu SHS, they know the NSMQ stage so well. They've been on, you know, many times. They're seated at school. And really, not a lot of people expected um, Ola SHS, you know, to win, you know, um, that con particular contest. But they did it, and they've made it um, to the quarterfinals of the ongoing um, competition. So, so that's also one of the um, shockers, you know, if I may call it such, that we had um, yesterday. Let me also take you to another contest. Oh, okay, my mask just wouldn't allow me. It keeps covering my face, Mamavi. <laughs> Let me take you to another contest now. Navrongo na, na SHS, TI Amas Kumasi, TI Amas um, Potting. Navrongo SHS won that particular contest with 41 points. Yes, 41 points. TI Amas Kumasi um, had 30 points. TI Amas Potting um, had, you know, 28 points. Once again, not many predicted um, that Navrongo SHS would win one, that particular contest. Although they came in as a seeded school, a lot of people thought it was going to be a TI Amas affair. But they crashed two TI Amas institutions. One from Potts and one from Kumasi sent them packing. That is a great feat. And I say congratulations um, to the guys from Navrungu um, SHS. Another contest also that happened here at the University of Ghana Business School, Adisado College, um, Bishop Herman College, and then Takwa SHS. Adisado College, they've been to the finals many times, many, many, many times. Um, and um, they proved to be a force to work, work on with. They proved that. See, we know this NSMQ stage so much that, you know, we get to the finals like, like, like never before. No school has been able to do that. They get to the finals like all the time, you know. And um, they won their contest with 50 points. The second school was Bishop Herman College. They had 34 points, and then Takwa SHS had um, 25 uh, points. Once again, we say congratulations to the guys from uh, Disadel College. And uh, when we spoke to them yesterday, um, they actually had some sweet words for Infant Supreme School, and I was actually shocked. I thought they were also going to join, you know, the bandwagon, you know, to sort of tease, you know, Infant Supreme a little bit. But they said, oh, it happens. It's a competition. Um, so we hope that they'll go back to the drawing board and come back 2021 stronger. And I was like, oh, wow, this is coming from a disco. OK. <laughs> so I'll say congratulations to the guys from Addis Ababa College. They are confident that they are going to win um, this year's trophy. We're waiting to see that, actually. Um, and then another contest. OK, so we've already talked about Kumasi Academy, Infant Supreme School, and St. Mary's um, SHS. Let's zoom in straight to the contest that we have for you um, today, and um, five-time winners of the National Science and Maths Quiz, in fact, record holders of the National Science and Maths Quiz, Presec Legon, they will be competing um, today here, at the, they'll be competing at the new end block. You know, they've won it five times, they want to win it um, for the sixth time. Um, sometime 
last year they were talking about let's talk about sex let's talk about sex yeah there was a lot of talk about that on social media in fact it was everywhere but at the end of the day um <laughs> it was <laughs> At the end of the day, I mean, they didn't, you know, um, win the trophy, although they got so close to it. St. Augustine's College actually won. Um, they snatched the trophy with just a difference of about um, five points. The Presec guys are coming back this time around like wounded lions, and they're hoping to win it for a record, you know, um, sixth time. Although they still they hold a record for winning for a fifth time, they want to do it for a sixth time. So it's going to be Presec Legon versus Agri Memorial SHS and Nsinyani SHS. Now, just some background to this particular contest. Um, Presec Ligon are title holders when it comes to the Greater Accra Regional you know, um, Championship. I remember um, there was Accra Academy in that particular final contest um, that was held at Achimata School. Presec Ligon um, won the Greater Accra Regional Championship with 38 points. The second place school was um, Accra Academy. I think they had about 20, 20 points their record, 2019 record, they got to the finals. They missed out on the trophy by just about five points. So really, if you're talking about performance, Presec Ligon stands tall, very tall, um, in this particular contest. Agri Memorial SHS, yes, um, we saw them um, at the regionals. We saw them at the prelims as well. I was with them during the preliminary round of competition in the central region. Um, they came up against Holy Child, and then um, there was a tech school in there. Um, Holy Child had... I think 42 points, and then Agri Memorial, they had 41 points. They missed out by just, you know, uh, they lost by just one point, or let, yeah, by just one point. Agri Memorial, we can say that they're a good side, they're a strong side. But coming up against Presec Ligon, huh, we do not want to make any predictions. Shinyani SHS, Shinyani SHS scored, you know, very high points. Um, at some point, you know, um, in the competition, during the regional qualifiers, actually, they had about 75 points. Sunyani SHS, but during the prelims, they actually dropped from 75 to about 30 points. We didn't know what happened, and um, some persons we spoke to were attributing that to um, the coronavirus pandemic because they said there was, a, there was a lockdown and there was uncertainty about whether the competition was going to happen. So that's why they dropped from 70 to 30. So really, coming back, we cannot predict what is likely you know, um, to happen in this um, particular contest with Sunyani SHS because, I mean, they may surprise us. So we're just waiting to see how that is going to pan out um, here. Other contests that are going to happen, we have University Practice SHS. Koforidia Senior High Technical School, St. Charles um, Minor Seminary. And then um, we have TEPA SHS versus Ghana National College and then Akachi Senior High School. We have um, St. John's Grammar School versus KNUST SHS versus Osino Presby SHTS. We also have St. John's School Second D and then Bogatanga SHS and then Northern School of Business. At 9 a.m. at the University of Ghana Business School, we have St. Ignatius of Loyola SHS, Ebri Presby SHS, and then Presby SHS Abetifi. So that'll be it. That'll be it for um, the contests for today. And I also gave you um, some kind of update on the contest that we had, you know, um, yesterday. So just stick and stay with us um, here on Join News. We'll be bringing you all the updates, you know, um, that you need. And you know that one of the sponsors for um, the National Science and Maths Quiz is the Prudential Life Insurance. Yes, Prudential Life Insurance. You're making... Uh, we are making the National Science and Math Quiz possible. And yesterday, I spoke to Frances Ofori, who is the head of marketing and communications at Prudential Life Insurance. I've also been speaking to Nanekia Ankuma Sari, who is the managing director for Primetime Limited. Let's uh, watch that conversation that I had, you know, um, with them. All the time, you know, you, you always have um, the smaller schools or less endowed or lesser known schools kicking out uh, a big boy or a big girl. Uh, from time to time. I mean, every year you have, you have something like that. So we are not surprised at all. Uh, I must say that I was expecting it because I saw that the infant swim team was not very strong when we, uh, in February, when we went to do the championship in Cape Coast, uh, they were not very strong. And uh, 
So I'm not surprised at all. In fact, it is something that uh, I was looking forward to. Yeah. I know the butcher boys will be me for that, but yeah. <laughs> I was expecting it. That, let, me expecting also, it. let me also corroborate that. Let me add my voice to that. that I also expect that something like that to happen. I mean, especially looking at the um, Kumaka boys, yes. um, especially from the regions, yes. their performance from the regions and all of that. They had some trials even with infants in school at the region. So really, it was not difficult, you know, to predict this particular outcome. But I know a lot of outsiders are shocked about that. Uh, let me find out for you, Frances. Um, are you shocked in Fancy Pim School? Um, shocked in Fancy Pim School, yes. But these are kind of um, the twists and turns that you expect from the National Science and Mask Way. So on that front, I'm not shocked. You know, it makes the whole thing exciting. And we're happy when the lesser endowed schools, um, you know, come up strong. Okay. Now that brings me to... The point about you know prudential life insurance. Um, you want to tell us a bit about prudential life insurance and why you're supporting the National Science and Maths Quiz. Okay, so prudential life insurance Ghana. We've been on the market for about six years now. Um, we're actually affiliated with Prudential PLC, um, that was incorporated in England and Wales, and. We, I get this quite a bit. We're not affiliated with Prudential Bank. Um, we've been around for about 170 years. Um, we have, um, in Ghana, a little over 100 staff. We have um, about 1,500 agents and close to a million customers. So um, we're doing good business. Our business basically is to help people get the most out of life. And this we do through our products, which are long-term savings and protection products. So financial planning that... Um, helps you plan for education, helps you plan for taking the risk, um, certain risks that you don't foresee, like um, accidents, um, critical illnesses, disability, and even death. Mm. So just to help people look to the future with confidence in planning for their future. Mm. And the, the round that they are sponsoring, um, Prudential Life Insurance is sponsoring, um, the problem of the day, um, really looking at how practical practical solutions to you know, science problems. Um, I want to find out, I think there's an aspect of the National Science Mask that also deals with that as well. Aside from the problem of the day, we also have the science and tech, you know, um, fair and all of those things. Um, how's it been going and what, what kind of innovations have been coming up at the science and tech fair? Well, people have been doing all sorts of things. Um, uh, we have a lot of people doing um, uh, using recyclable material, so recycling plastics, old tires. So last year we had, um, I th um, was it Accra Academy, with um, uh, like a boom box, yes, from uh, recycled tires. We've had some monikers and um, doing um, seats and then also um, like... Um, how, how do I call this? It's not. It's not exactly like concrete, but it's. You can pave. You can use this for roads. Like, um, if you put if melted plastics and compressed melted plastics. I mean, they've been doing all sorts of irrigation systems and interesting things. Unfortunately, we were not able to do the SciTech um, fair at this national championship because um, COVID nineteen. Uh, the results of COVID-19, you know, the effects, uh, the lockdown and the closure of the schools for a period of time, the teachers raised this concern that they hadn't had enough time with the students to be able to build projects with them. And when school reopened, I think in July, when the schools went back, it was really to prepare them for the WASI and have them write the exam and leave. So there was no time for them to do projects. So we can't do the, the SciTech Fair with this national championship, but we are hoping to be able to do it in November, towards the end of November, because the schools are going back next month. We are hoping to be able to do it um, and do it big then. But a lot of interesting things come up there, as you will see when, when the time is up. We were able to do it at the regional level, but at the national, no. So. We haven't forgotten about it. We are still hoping to do it. Francis, any special reason um, Prudential Life Insurance decided to sponsor um, you know, the National Science and Maths Quiz, the round three, or maybe why you decided to come on board? Okay, so why we came on board, it's in line with our strategy. Um, 
which I mentioned earlier, um, our purpose, which is to help people get the most out of life. Um, when it comes to CSR, we've been heavily invested in education and health. And um, in the education, we our own um, program that we run, which is a Prudential um, Actuarial Support System. So basically, we award the five highest achieving um, graduating students from three universities, so UDS, um, UCC, and KNUSD, and that's in actuarial science. But um, Primetime does the same with an NSMQ, you know, promoting science and math um, education, and, and that's something that we are proud to be associated with. Aside from the promotion of um, science and math, NSMQ teaches life lessons, so I mean, in, in today's world of instant gratification, everything is, you know, instant or fast. You know, NSMQ is not like that. Mm -hmm. you, you can't read an abort or a gust in one month and come and sit here, you know. Um, some of the students are even picked in the first, you know, first year when they go into school. So you have to prepare and, you know, you either win or you learn. You know, no one is a loser here. And that's something that we, we, we're proud to be associated with as well. Can we find out from you, Danikia? Um, I mean, I've, I've done a lot of reading, and usually I meet former contestants of the National Science and Math Quiz. And it, it, it is the case that anyone who mounts the Science and Math Quiz stage, it looks like you don't have any reason, you know, to fill your WASI papers, no. Mm -hmm. All of them, medicine, uh, mechanical engineering, all the top, top courses in the universities, many of them have graduated also in very high places. What kind of satisfaction does it bring to Primetime Limited that, okay, you are providing some kind of healthy, you know, competition among the schools, healthy rivalry among the schools, and then after that also you see your products out there and they're doing very well. What kind, of, what kind of joy does it bring to you? Well, the joy is um, how many fold? <laughs> mm -hmm. Because there's so many ways of looking at it. First of all, um, we, because of the toughness of the competition, we attract the best. And, yeah. and um, by putting out the questions when we do the playbacks, we also assist with teaching. Yeah. So it's not just for the contestants, but mm -hmm. anybody who's interested in learning from the SHS syllabus, we put the questions out on the screen so you can follow and work out the questions yourselves. We love how the old students are taking charge of their schools and supporting them. Some are building science labs and science fa facilities. They are hiring teachers and motivating them to, to train the students. All of these things make us really, really happy. And of course, when we find that uh, a former contestant has come, has done something wonderful, we are always excited. And that's why we've been looking for them for the mentorship program so that they also have a way of giving back to the program by inspiring other people or students to, to aspire to great things like they have done. And while talking about this, I want to mention in particular Bubune Adi of the 1999 Infant Spam winning team. He actually instituted an award mm. in memory of uh, Professor Rama Adi. He ran for five years and he's renewed it and increased it. So from 2,000 Ghana cities uh, a year to the best team, he's renewed it and it's 3,000 Ghana cities for the best team. So we look at mm. former contestants who are doing this. I don't know if you followed our live chats yeah. where we, we've been looking for them yeah. and trying to inspire uh, our fans and other students to aspire to great heights like these these former contestants have done. So it gives us great pride in so many different ways. Sure. Yes. We're we'll wrapping up um, this conversation shortly. But France, I want to find which school did you attend? Do you want to share with us? Oh, do we need to get into it? <laughs> <laughs> Take a guess. Where do you okay. think I could possibly go to school? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and don't get it wrong. I don't have if to get, get it right. right. I'll give you an extra, an extra information. Oh, wow. Definitely get into uh, it must be a girl's school. Oh, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> It is. Oh, it is a girl's no school. Points for that. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, it starts with a W. Wege. Oh, sure. 
Okay. Okay. You I don't, can't, I told yeah, you you can't get it wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, think yeah, there's something about so, wigging. So now let me you tell see. you about the extra information. Uh -huh. The other day you were asking me about it. So the interesting thing is that we are actually classmates at Wesley Girl. Wow. We were, we were even dumb mates at a point. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> Is this is interesting. This is really interesting. This is really interesting. So two-way gay people. Okay, I don't have to go there actually. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, as we wrap up this conversation, what message do you have for other you know corporate bodies, you know, out there? Um, because I mean, there are a lot of talk. There's a lot of talk about um, corporate institutions not really doing enough to put, push education, you know, activities, you know, out there. Do you have any message for corporate institutions? Um. Yeah, I mean, why we're so invested in education is that it has far-reaching implications, I mean, for generations, you know, something that can turn the fortunes of the country around, you know, and so, yes, I would encourage other corporate institutions to get on board, I mean, the NSMQ is an easy sale, you know, so it's, it's easy for them to see how you can get gratification in so many different ways, you know, so... Thank you to everybody who's who's made it come this far, and we need more people to make it even go further okay. across Africa and sure. the entire world. Sure. Thank you. Your final words. My final words, as always, a big thank you to all our sponsors and our collaborators, especially the Ghana Education Service and the Ministry of Education. They are um, the GS is our main sponsor. Big thank you to Absa Bank for their partnership to Prudential Life Insurance. This is, I think, your third year. Our fourth. Our fourth year, yes, yes, yes. 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 uh, of being on the program. We are excited that you are back with the Prudential Life Insurance because you're making a difference in, in, in the lives of the participants. Thank you to Goyle. Thank you to Etel Tigo, Dano Milk, to um, uh, Joy News. <laughs> for all the wonderful things that you've been doing to um, Third Eye Care Vision uh, Center, Academic City University College, Accra College of Medicine, Medifem, a multi specialist hospital and fertility center, GTP. Oh, wow, the list is. <laughs> I'm just checking around to make sure that I don't leave anybody out, awesome. but yes. No. Thank you to thank you to everybody who's made it possible. YFM, thank you to everybody who's made it possible for us to have the, the NSMQ year in and year out. We appreciate the support. Thanks so much, Steve, for your time. Okay, so you just heard um, Frances Ofori. She's the head of marketing and communications, Prudential Life Insurance, and Anikia Kumasa, who's the managing director of Primetime Limited. Thank you. We thank you to Maxwell Agbaba, that's my colleague uh, who always brings us updates on the National Science and Math Quiz. We're looking forward to the last one age stage competition today, tomorrow. By this time, we'll be talking about the quarterfinals. So stay with us for all the conversations. Thanks to Bright Senior High School in Kokrontumi, DBS Rufin, Adonko Hand Sanitizer, and Adonko Next Level Energy Drink, our proud sponsors for this segment, the National Science and Mass Quiz, and for also bringing the competition to you uh, here on Join You. So make a date uh, again tomorrow for another conversation. But of course, we'll keep you updated with all the competitions throughout the day today on all our social media handles. When we come back, Kanye has got show business news right here on the AM Show. Please stay with us. <laughs>